Hello everyone, this is the Pyrocordist. Today we're doing a review of five different types of paracord and their various qualities and the way they perform in doing your projects. I'm going to start out with what I call junk. This stuff I got from Home Depot. It's labeled paracord, um, but as you can see, it is not original paracord. Uh, inside of it, there are just some nylon strands that tend to fluff up and knot up when you try to do your projects. Uh, this stuff is pretty good to practice with. It's nice and thick. It's pretty strong, but as you twist it, as you see with some of the other paracords we're going to review, uh, knots tend to develop inside the cord. Um, this stuff is great for practicing and otherwise sometimes very pretty. Uh, you'll find that the lesser quality paracord has great colors and um, sheens and styles, uh, but they are not true paracord. Um, we're going to now look at another one on the list, uh, which I call utility cord. This stuff is packaged thusly. It says clearly on it, utility cord. Excellent all-purpose cord. Got 50 feet of it here. It's 220 pound test. Now it says survival cord, but um, I don't think it's anything used for climbing or supporting the weight of a human being or anything of that nature. Um, in a pinch I guess it'll do for that purpose but we're talking about paracording and uh, this stuff I got it because it was camo and uh, it makes a pretty good bracelet but it's very thin it doesn't knot up so much it acts pretty much like the top quality paracord which you'll see in a moment and uh, it works. You can use this to practice with as well. If it's just the color you gotta have, this stuff will do. This is a strand of 450 paracord. It has four strands inside and they feel kinda like cotton. Uh, the outer strands tend to open up like this. They fray quite a bit and cutting and burning this stuff is um, kind of problematic at times. It doesn't flatten out well and sometimes the outer edge will burn very badly. Just like the junk here, if you try to burn this, um, this part may sear together and this part will shrink actually and go down the cord. Um, you can't really fit this stuff very well. This 450 paracord kind of fits well but this stuff is extremely difficult to work with with a FID. Uh, referring to the junk paracord from Home Depot. Moving up the list, we've got 550 paracord. But it is labeled as commercial type 3 paracord. Generally it comes in a package like this from Rothko. It's labeled 550 Type 3 Commercial. And that's very important. Um, it too is 550 pound test. It has seven strand. And it's made by a certified U.S. government contractor. But they are not making this cord primarily for survival uses. Um, for paracording, it's a good source, a good cord. But one thing about this, I've noticed with some of the projects I've done, like these, this bracelet was made and it was started out as a reflective cord, it's very pretty, but this bracelet was too tight for me when I first made it and it tended to stretch. It actually stretched a little bit and fit my wrist a lot better. Um, I measured it to my length and it actually grew on me a little bit. This type of stuff has an, uh, encouraged people to shrink, boil, or otherwise manipulate the cord to try to avoid this stretching problem. 
the boiling thing is to shrink it down and avoid the shrink the the stretching because this commercial type of cord it's labeled as 550 does tend to stretch uh, here's another bracelet I made with um, the commercial type 550 cord it has a lot of different colors and as you can see I've got um, some army digital camo here in the project and um, it stretched a little bit too um, the cord in this is all commercial type 3 and it's quite soft on the wrist but it does stretch and it tends to flatten out here's another project I made with the same reflective so-called 550 cord and as you can see it just doesn't hold its shape this is a nice little handle that I project that I saw online and tried to do but with this particular cord as you can see how uneven it tends to be in places and it, it doesn't slide or hold its form and that's the same type of thing that happens in other projects now I made this one nice and tight it holds up pretty good it's a nice tight weave so no problems there. Um, with the commercial cord, I don't know if you can see how that does. It, it, it kind of crinkles up and as you crinkle it more and more it may develop some knots. You may see some uneven activity going on here in this cord and um, it tends to kind of make a, a bracelet or a project look a little bit knotty. Um, so this stuff is good for colors, makes great bracelets. You might want to boil it and shrink it. Uh, at least tie it very tightly in your projects and you'll come away with a good finish. This is another project I did. It has 550 paracord, which I'm going to show you in a minute, and that Army Digital Type 3 paracord. Um, this bracelet did not move one bit and that is because we are using mill spec. Now, if you got to do a project for a survival item, uh, this is 100% military cord. It says mill spec plus. It, it, it listed it as Type 3 commercial, but I find that this mill spec stuff is the best. Um, it's seven strand, 550 pound test, 530 seconds of an inch nylon. Also made in the USA, as you can see. Now, mill spec only comes in about five basic colors black, white, OD green, gray, and a very bright orange, which I'll show you here. These are two mill spec cords. As you can see, they hold up quite well in a twisting angle. They don't tend to knot up. Here in this mill spec black, you can clearly see the seven strands. And they are shiny nylon, apparently, not cotton like the 450 paracord. And now this stuff burns well, it twists well and it holds its shape a lot better than say the Rothko. This is the mill spec. It's what you see wrapped around here. Another little project I did, there's mill spec attached to this lanyard. Uh, this is made with 450 paracord. As you can see it tends to flatten out as you use it. This is 450 paracord. Um, here's a little burn here you can see. Um, it does pretty well in that regard. Um, it makes a nice soft bracelet, great for kids and women with the colors, etc. But it doesn't hold up like your good old 550 paracord. Here's a bracelet, doesn't budge at all. This is a survival bracelet, it's the millipede. 
here's another bit of cord that's very nice to work with. Um, you're gonna see this around. This is the this is the zombie edition. Um, it apparently is made primarily for paracording. Uh, it comes in a lot of different colors, and this is an exciting color here. It's, I think it's called Outbreak. Um, this stuff holds up very well. Um, I'm uh, not sure who this is made by, but uh, it's U.S. Rope Company, I think. I can't the labels a little busted up here, and uh, it's strictly for artistic use. Uh, somewhere on here, I did see it. It says uh, "Not Survival Cord," so this is just an artistic version. Um, but I found that it holds up quite well in the projects and uh, burns and handles on the end very well and it's 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 really tough this is some really good stuff you know I like it much better than uh, some of the other paracords the 550 it's just really soft easy to work with but this stuff makes a good solid bracelet and I've made some projects with this and it doesn't tend to stretch on you either. So there you have it. We've got a number of different cords, things you can work with. Keep in mind that what your purpose is, if you're going survival, make sure you're using the mill spec. There's a lot of 450 cords out there with nice colors. This is 550, good colors, and it's a nice solid braid. Make it tight and it doesn't bunch up on you at all. So, in the end, make your choices on the cord you use based on the purpose you want. And again, my recommendation is mill spec. Moving down to Rothko, as well as your decorative cords. Have a good time.